gold and silver will be will overcome the cartel, and it'll probably mean the end of the cartel. It's just a matter of when. Now, if we look at J.P. Morgan's position in silver, it looks like they're expanding their short position again. Can you comment on that at all? Yeah, yeah, and see how how well they've done. Yeah, let me point out one thing about these COTs reports, okay? I've been watching the COT report every freaking week since 2002. And I can tell you that between 2002 and 2000, let's say, seven, it was a dead indicator. I mean, there was no doubt that every single time that the, that the short position, the commercial position was building, that gold and silver would be smashed. And every t- single time it contracted, which would be after a smash, it would go right back up. And I'm trying to tell people now, there is zero correlation right now, and I mean zero, between the COTs and the gold and silver prices. Of course, they still short them on the way up, and of course, they, when, when the prices are going down, they buy them. But there's no real correlation anymore. Just Look, I mean, the short position has been going up for, by the commercials, what, for two months now? And what has silver done? It's gone from 26 to 35. So what, so what are we supposed to say? Well, yeah, it means it's going to fall. Yeah, eventually it will fall. But the point is that, you know, J.P. Morgan, the COMEX, there is, there is no business there going on. It's simply a matter of naked shorting as much as they can. And eventually they'll lose. So I'm not worried about the COMEX at all. Just like people, you know, at one point they worried about the dollar index. The dollar index has been in the same trading range now for seven years. And still you'll see commentators, actually eight years, and those, the commentators will still say, well, gold's up or down because of the dollar. The COMEX, the dollar, mean nothing as far as those statistics. The cartel attacks every day. It doesn't matter if they're shorting or if they're covering. They're always going to be there at 3 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 20, 10 o'clock, and 12. And net, net, they're losing. They will keep trying, but they're getting the mar- uh, diminishing returns of what they're doing, and they're going to keep losing. Well, Andy, you're absolutely on fire. And, uh, you know, the reason we love speaking with you so much is because you're so knowledgeable and you cut right to the brass tacks. I mean, you don't beat around the bush. Let me ask you about something that's a little on the fringe, Andy. I've talked about it with others. Zero Hedge covered it briefly last week. We saw $6 trillion in bonds seized in Zurich by Italian police. Now, what was noteworthy to me about that, and Zero Hedge commented, and um, rightfully so, the fact that these $6 trillion in quote-unquote fake bonds we're in these very uniquely patinaed, authentic, uh, apparently authentic Federal Reserve chests. Have you been following that story at all? And if you have, can you give us your thoughts on it? Yeah, I've uh, I follow every story, and you know I, I have a love hate relationship with Zero Hedge because I, I feel that they are the best financial website in the world. Uh, the only problem is they don't seem to want to go to the most important issue of gold manipulation. But either way, yeah, I've been following that story. It's one of many. Uh, true conspiracy stories in that there's really no way of under, of knowing exactly what's true and what's not. Uh, yes, I was told uh, it says that they were Chicago Federal Reserve containers where they were. I be- that's probably the part I believe the most because anything that has to do with the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve is uh, is untrustworthy. And, you know, if they did actually put another $6 trillion into circulation, what's the difference? They put $16 trillion into circulation in those secret loans we just found about. How, how many how many other trillions are out there that we don't know about? Uh, so you know, well, I don't think we'll ever know exactly what happened there. But you know, that's the problem with paper money. You can make all of it that you want, and gold you can't. So at some point, all these shenanigans will end, and all the conspiracy theories will end, and we'll look up, and gold will be ten thousand dollars an ounce, and the dollar will be crashed, and it won't matter how many treasury bonds they print. Okay, I want you to comment on this, too. The other night I was watching an episode of this new Smash show uh, on, I think it's on Nat Geo, called uh, Doomsday Preppers. And one of the preppers in this particular show I was watching was worried about a worldwide financial collapse, or more specifically, a financial economic collapse here in this country. And at the end of that particular segment with that particular prepper, the uh, the graphic came up supplied by Nat Geo and a voiceover that says the reality of a financial collapse in the United States experts say is highly unlikely and then the graphic said that there's only two trillion dollars including all checking accounts of money in circulation. You want to comment on that? That felt like an awful lot of misinformation to me at the end of that segment. Right. Well, I mean, who knows how much money is in circulation? And plus, like you know, the government can define it however they want. They can. You know, they have M1, M2, the, the no longer M3, and then what I call M4, which is all the stuff they don't tell you about. And then they got all kind of semantic definitions, uh, you know, what is circulation, meaning is it actually a dollar bill versus digital. 
And, uh, you know, again, anyone who's trying to, to give you numbers of what kind of money is out there probably has wrong information. I go to John Williams at Shadow Stats uh, for the uh, projected M3, uh, which is probably about as close as anyone has out there. But then again, when, when you read that there's $16 trillion of secret loans out there, it's like, what's the point? You know, all these years, the, the World Gold Council has been putting out their stupid central bank uh, gold holdings, and, you know, and they make their, their supply and demand projections based on it. And then all of a sudden, the Chinese will say, oh, yeah, we own 1,100 tons instead of 600 tons. So the point is, all the numbers that are out there are fake. The fact is that there's enough overt printing of money by everyone to know that the, that, the, that the ratio of gold to paper is out of whack. But who knows what the real number is? It's probably exponentially more uh, than, than, uh, than we know about. Before we wrap up, just a couple more points. When you mentioned John Williams, you know, when I got into this doing videos, even just a couple years ago when I did the silver perspective, uh, John Williams was talking about uh, the inflation-adjusted all-time high in silver if you use the M3, M4 numbers of being about $456 an ounce. He's now redone that calculation. He says it's closer to $517 an ounce for silver. And, you know, as you and I both know, James Turk has been saying uh, for almost a decade that we will see by the year 2014 to 2015 Four hundred dollar silver and eight thousand dollar gold. And you know what's funny, Andy, is that we're already sitting here in 2012. It seems like in my mind's eye when I talk about these things, 2013, 2014, that's still five years away. It's right around the corner. Yeah, well, it's like stock multiples. You're looking 12 months ahead, and then as soon as you get into January of 2012, you're already looking at 2013 earnings, and it's you know becomes a lot closer. Uh, but as to you know the price of, of gold and silver. You know, my target, look, I just put out a piece two days ago or three days ago called The Ultimate Quadruple Top Breakout. It's, so far, it's the most popular piece that I've written because it, it takes the chart of silver, the inflation-adjusted chart that goes back to the 1400s. Uh, you know, the high price back then was about 800 bucks an ounce. Uh, and, uh, and it shows how, how the quadruple, you know, we've had, we were at $50 an ounce up until 1900 or so when all the major uh, discoveries of silver were made out west in Nevada and Idaho and the like. You know, all that supply is gone now. Okay. And then, then on top of that, you know, we have uh, silver returning to its monetary role while at the same time being the second most uh, used commodity on earth. So I think you go back to that $50 price from, uh, from 1900 and the $50 price from 1980 and the $50 price from last year. And, uh, and you're talking about the potential for the biggest, you know, 100 year plus quadruple top breakout in history. And I think it'll easily take it just on technicals, something like that, to the $800 price we had, you know, 500 years ago, uh, when gold, when gold and silver were the only true money in the world. But you know, that's just one way of looking at it. I just look at, you know, I'm not the only person. Sinclair, uh, Mike Maloney, and others have looked at just the overt money printing that we've seen, and again, just the overt part. And you know, if you do the balance of the balance sheet to the uh, to the gold, like Jim Sinclair uh, w would say, you get you know, 15 to 20 thousand dollars ounce of gold. My silver price target is based on the ratio. It was 15 to 1 gold silver or gold silver ratio for for the past, you know, for 500 years or so. Since the uh since we've had the we went off the gold standard, it's been so manipulated that the, the average has been 50 or 60. And now that all the all the, you know, now that 15 to 1 ratio was based on the amount of gold and silver produced. It used to be 15 ounces of silver for one of gold. Now that ratio is closer to 8 to 9 ounces because it's becoming more scarce. Plus all the silver is gone while all the gold is still there. So I think 15 to 1 ratio is a, is a no-brainer for the future. And pro I mean, it could overshoot as low as 5 to 1 if you have a real shortage of silver. And therefore, with my gold price product production, I get a thousand, to one thousand to four thousand dollar price target for silver. Uh, sometime, like you said, potentially not as far in the future as people would think. Wow, that's incredible. Well, you know, that's why we love speaking with you, Andy. I mean, what that's. Talk about thinking outside the box. A one thousand to four thousand dollar an ounce price projection for silver is—it uh, sounds astounding. But if you've done the research, if you've—if you spent the time actually working the numbers, taking a look at the, the supply and demand uh, issues and the paper suppression that we talk about endlessly, which is just so critical to understanding the big picture, that's realistic. And I know people think that's pie in the sky. It sounds crazy, but I'll tell you what's crazy is this government and governments around the world printing in perpetuity uh, money out of thin air. Okay, last question. This one is a little bit out there, and a simple Google search ought to give us the answer. But this one comes from Tony, and you know he's worried about a meltdown in this country. What if he wanted to leave the country? Are there any laws in place that would limit the amount or the ability of a person to take physical metals on an airplane to get out of the country? 
Uh, well, I mean, of course, you have to declare, I think, you know, $10,000 of uh, currency on you. And there are differences in the declaration value because, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to get this wrong, but I think if you have a $50 gold coin, then it can be called $50. But again, you know, even if you're going to do that, you know, taking a lot of gold out of the country uh, on an airplane could be a bit dangerous. I do know one person who has told me he did that, and at some point uh, a few years later, the the feds were at his house asking him questions. So, you know, it's if you're going to move out of the country, you have to you have to really, really do your due diligence. I can't say I have the answers. I haven't thought of leaving the country, uh, but there's. You know, I can say that the controls against uh, taking money out of the country are, are, are limited now compared to what they're obviously going to be in the future when things get really bad. Yeah, absolutely. And with the Patriot Act and everything else in place, due diligence is the key, because the last thing you want to do is show up in good faith at the airport. Even if you just, let's say you're going to try to leave leave uh, the country with $50,000 in gold, the last thing you want them to do is seize it and lock it up in a court case, because you'll probably never get it back. That's right. Well, Andy, uh, thanks so much. Why don't you tell folks again how they can find your excellent work on the Internet? Let's get pe- let's get people linked over there right away. Right. You go to milesfranklin.com, and the front page in the top right there's a box. You get in. I write five days a week for free, as does David Sheckman, the founder of our firm, where, you know, this is what we pride ourselves on at Miles Franklin in education. And uh, you can call me anytime or email at ahoffman at milesfranklin.com. Let's push a little further on that, Andy. Do you have a phone number people can call? Because I know that unlike some of the other online dealers, people don't put their orders through uh, in electronic form at Miles Franklin. Sure. Well, if you want to talk to one of the brokers at Miles Franklin, uh, you'd call 800-822-8080. But if you want to call me personally with questions, it's 720-350-4130. Yeah, you can't get that kind of access from AppMex or Gainesville or anybody else, guys. Andy Hoffman and Miles Franklin, thanks so much for your time. I mean, when I say I appreciate it, I'm understating it. We really all truly appreciate your expertise and the fact that you're in our camp on this thing. Because like I always say, we're all in this mess together. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you, the service that you're doing is uh, is equally important, Sean. Thank you. Jeez, it's, uh, I'm blessed to even be a part of it. All right, Andy, until we speak again, thanks and take care. Okay, you too. Thanks for tuning in, and check out sgtreport.com for all the latest. Good night. Hey guys, SGT here. Kind of an emergency update. Uh, was wanting to talk with Bix Weir yesterday. We connected briefly and decided let's talk today, and now the markets have calmed down just a bit. Basically, Bix is saying everything is happening according to plan. Bix, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm uh, really busy these days watching all the action. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, I put out a little note today uh, at SGT Report saying, did the elite send a signal yesterday that a market bottom had been reached because the S&P 500 finished down yesterday 6.66%? And Bix, you know how those elite love to use their secret coded numerology. <laughs> I, I do, but I, I don't think they, they've they signaled that, that uh, we're, we've hit a bottom. I think, I think what's going on right now with the Dow is that the Fed is meeting today. They, they're they supposed to release something at 11.15, and I think what they're going to do is make a gigantic mistake. And then in the days following, you're going to see another continuation of this crash so that they put the focus on the Fed managing the monetary system and making mistakes as they do it. Dix, let's talk about your e-blast this week. The Dow has tanked you know, a couple thousand points in short order, and um, one of your more recent notes says, now the end game kicks into high gear. This is a new reality. You really truly believe that everything is going according to plan, huh? Uh, yes, I do. And, and things will transpire over the next, you know, from now to the end of the year, we're going to see a continual decrease, an increase in the velocity of that decrease, and we're going to see... The, the main battles right now for the bad guys are in the silver markets, and they are doing absolutely everything they can to project to the world that silver is not the place to be, silver is not a monetary metal, and silver is not a safe haven. Now, of course, we know different. We know that that's complete bullshit, and the the battles that are going on, it's kind of like if you ever watched Star Trek and – just when they're going to get blasted out of space, they say transfer all power to the forward shields. That's what's going on right now. The banks are trying their best to protect silver and not gold, although they're both run off computer programs, 
Silver is the metal that can destroy the entire monetary system. Taking out J.P. Morgan would start a, a crash in the derivatives market that is unrecoverable. And that's where all their power is going. Protect the silver market so that people don't rush in and buy physical silver. Yeah. Those of us who understand this uh, silver story know that we're right. We know that we're in the right. We know that we're on the right side of the trade if we're long, especially if we have physical metal. And, um, you know, frankly, as disappointing as the recent near-term silver uh, performance has been, relative to the dumping and the the absolute uh, annihilation of the stock market and stocks, silver has really helped retain purchasing power. It's actually helped us retain our wealth. It hasn't crashed. And and that's that's the the bright side. But um, it does feel like silver should have gone up four, five, six, seven dollars over the past week if it was going to track gold. What is your uh, perception of where we're headed still over the next six months? Because it seems to me as long as these guys have the ability to crush silver with endless paper, we're never going to get past 50. You're right, except there's a few things to think about. Remember back when you know, silver went from $25 in January to $50 by May 1st. That was Bill Daly, who is uh, Obama's chief of staff now. He was in charge of the silver rigging at J.P. Morgan. Now he's sitting right next to the president. He allowed it to go up to 50. He slammed it down. It's still on a computer program. The The key is that where would we be today if we started all this trouble at $50 before they slammed it? Would we, you know, if you run the scenario, they've been slamming it ever since May 1st, silver should be $200, $300 today if it was allowed to trade freely from May 1st on. So you need to put everything into perspective. Yes, silver hasn't gone down that much compared to the stock market and things like that, but where should silver be if it was allowed to trace freely from, say, May 1st on. It should be two, $300. But that is part of the frustration. I mean, it's. I'm just saying, you know, sunny side is that it didn't crash, um, but still, it, 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 it gets a little frustrating when we know that it's being manipulated to stay at these low levels. You wrote in an e-blast earlier in the week, you wrote, uh, quote, very important. There's a serious lesson that the world must learn before we return to a gold-silver standard. That lesson is that unbacked fiat money is a curse on humanity. The good guys have cleared the way for massive hyperinflation to destroy the global unbacked fiat monetary system as a lesson. That's a brutal lesson, Bix. It's going to destroy uh, a lot of people, the middle class, the working poor. Folks that are not prepared are going to be absolutely devastated. I, I, I know it's a brutal lesson, but in order to get full buy-in on a return to the gold standard, the lesson must be learned. People don't understand today, in the United States especially, that there is no free lunch. You cannot print wealth. That is, it's a fallacy. We've been living in this, in this fantasy world for so long, people have to learn this lesson in order for us to go forward. Otherwise, we are going to get sucked into the debt trap. We will never get free from where we are of these bankers controlling our lives. It is, a, it is a difficult lesson, but it must be learned. Well, and ultimately, I think that the lesson needs to be learned by the people, but boy, it's time for those bankers to learn a lesson. I mean, to manipulate humanity as they've done for literally hundreds of years is just beyond the pale, and I, I think there's a lot of us that are sitting in you know, in my shoes, people that feel the way I do want to see these people pay because they've gotten away literally with murder for so long, Bix. You conclude on this email blast, you write, quote, watch for the banksters to implode over the next few months. We're seeing some of that happen with uh, the action in uh, Citigroup stock, Bank of America stock. Is this truly getting to be sort of the 11th hour for these guys? It is. And, and you know, there will be retribution. There will be investigations into all of this once once the truth comes out. Now, part of that is going to be the announcement by the CFTC that there was manipulation in the silver markets by J.P. Morgan there's a whistleblower. Everything's all lined up. They've got plenty of proof. They've been waiting for the moment, and that moment is very near. I would, I would between now and the end of the year, that's going to happen. And just imagine what that's going to do to the, to the understanding and the psyche behind silver. And, and if, if they do that and remove J.P. Morgan from their position of controlling the market, we will get back to a free market in silver. Who knows what that would be? You know.
things things are rapidly changing. Okay, Bix. Well, before we let you go here, we you know we just wanted to do a quick check in, keep this to a one part interview. Um, we want people to understand that if you are in silver, you are in the right trade. If you're in gold, you've done extremely well over the past couple of weeks. But ultimately, if you look at the long term charts, silver has still outperformed gold in the ten year, the five year, the three year, the one year chart. You had a uh, subscriber ask you recently, why hasn't silver taken off? It went up to forty two, and now it's down to thirty eight. I'm sure this is on your readers' mind. Please comment. And I think you just did, but let's just sum up here because I want people to realize that what you're talking about is basically that the end is going to come like a thief in the night. This thing could snap to 100 or 200 in very short order once this system finally breaks once and for all. Am I putting words in your mouth or is that accurate? Yes, that's, that, that is accurate. And you know, when it will come, I'm putting together a, a timeline right now. Hopefully it will be out this week. Um, and it, it kind of breaks down what my timeline is over the next all of this should transpire over the next three or four months, and and things are going to change rapidly. Just sit tight, wait it out. If you have physical silver already, hold on to it. If you don't have it yet, there's still people selling it, so get out there and get as much as you can to prepare for what's coming. As Jim Sinclair has always said, uh, it takes a, uh, a real patient uh, trader, and there's precious few of them, to be right and sit tight. So I guess that's what we're saying, folks. Be right, now sit tight. So, Bix, last question. I'd be remiss not to ask you about what's going on in the Eurozone. We are seeing more cracks in the armor of this Eurozone story than we're seeing even uh, maybe in the United States. What do you foresee for the uh, Euro currency and then the dollar? Uh, if, you, if you listen to Lindsay Williams' The euro is going to go before the dollar, and it'll be about a week that it takes from the the crash of the euro to the crash of the dollar. I I'm on that page, but but it's all fiat currencies are blowing up now. The the entire unbacked monetary system is unsustainable, and we're going to learn that lesson very very painfully over the next few months. Okay, and uh, parting words of wisdom. Any last thoughts? Um, <laughs> I would say. Remember when you buy physical gold and physical silver that those that's money that you have in your in your safe deposit well hopefully not in your safe deposit box in your safe that is money it's you can't look at it as an investment look at it as money as as your future wealth and your future checking account is held in those physical coins Okay, Bix. Well, we know you've got a subscription-based service, but you also have a lot of good free information uh, over on your website. How do people find you? Just come over on uh, roadderuda.com, R-O-A-D-T-O-R-O-O-T-A.com, and uh, sign up uh, for a free email blast and uh, take a look at all the interesting stuff that's there. Okay. Hey, Bix, uh, thanks for the quick update, and uh, we'll check in again uh, as uh, as action in the market warrants. Um, certainly within a month, we'll check in, but maybe sooner. Thanks a lot, Bix. Thanks, Sean. Guys, thanks for tuning in, and thanks for all your support. Good night. It's your responsibility as citizens of this country to demand the freedoms that have been taken away from you. Hey guys, this promises to be an intriguing video with a shocking conclusion, so please stay tuned to the end. You just can't make this stuff up. If you go to SGT Report, you'll see the phrase associated with the website is the corporate propaganda antidote. Lately, there's been a lot of ad hominem attacks being hurled at me, calling me a fraud, a liar, and worse. This intellectually dishonest nut has even implied that I might work for J.P. Morgan. With all the attention and time these folks are spending on me, instead of targeting the criminal banksters, the corruption in government, the destruction of the dollar, and endless unconstitutional wars, it begs the question, why? So let's take a look at the facts. I'm an informed, concerned citizen of the United States of America, and I focus on the bad guys, the Federal Reserve System, the banking cartel, corrupt politicians, and the fascist corporations in bed with the government, which seem hell-bent on producing profits, no matter the cost to the people of this country or humanity. But yet, the vicious attacks continue. So perhaps where there's smoke, there's fire. Let's check. I've made 239 videos on these subjects in just under two years, so judge me by my fruits. Let's look at the first video I ever made for my YouTube channel. Is it evergreen? Was I spreading truth? Here's a clip. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. 
The lies being told about me are reaching new heights, and I find it all quite entertaining. So much time and effort to disparage my name, it's really quite flattering. But the fact of the matter is, with so many social predators working against the people at the moment, from the Federal Reserve System destroying the dollar, to the corporate lobbyists destroying democracy, to the Pentagon, which according to Leon Panetta will allow no cuts at all to their trillion dollar budget, the attacks on me just don't add up. So I hope you're paying attention, because this is where it gets interesting. The empirical evidence I'm about to show you proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is something far more sinister going on here than what may first meet the eye. Vicious attacks always attacking the messenger, but never the message. Multiple hate-filled messages being sent from multiple YouTube channels, usually linked to channels that sport practically no videos, no subscribers, and no history. So it's often hard to determine what motivates them. Fortunately, that is not the case outside of YouTube. The incredibly silly yet vicious comments left on my website, sgtreport.com, mirror the language used on my YouTube channel almost to the word. The same phrases, the same ad hominem attacks, the same foul language, but there is also one very important difference. The veil of anonymity fades on the internet, and the fingerprint they have left is shocking. More on that in a minute. Where once the silver and gold discussion space on YouTube was a proactive and peaceful place, it has in recent months become a divisive space, almost as though a concerted effort has been made to divide and conquer it. It's a curious development too, given that one of Barack Obama's closest confidants, Cass Sunstein, who is also the current head of the Orwellian-sounding Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, wrote a very pernicious paper in 2008 while at Harvard Law School. According to Salon.com, Sunstein proposed that the U.S. government should employ teams of covert agents agents and pseudo-independent advocates, mercenaries, to cognitively infiltrate online groups and websites, as well as other activist groups which advocate views that Sunstein deems, quote, false conspiracy theories about the government. This would be designed to undermine the credibility of said bloggers. Sunstein advocates that the government should accomplish this by sending, quote, covert agents into chat rooms, online social networks, or even real space groups. A link to the Salon piece so that you can learn more about this important information is below. Now back to sgtreport.com and those fingerprints. If you've ever attempted to leave a comment on SGT Report, you likely got a message saying that your comment is being held for moderation. After a certain number of approved comments, the feature simply whitelists the person based on their name, IP address, and email address. And after that, there's no moderation delay for approved users. This comment moderation feature was originally put in not to censor anyone, but rather to eliminate the overwhelming amount of advertising spam we get. However, recently, we've been receiving a truly absurd amount of hate comments, more than 60 of them during the last week alone. Some of these hate messages are long, detailed, venomous spiels, while others are just a single derogatory word or two. They've been left on almost every single thing we've published. This one from the name Pentagon Trash at pentagon.trash at hotmail.com. Here's another with the web address paid.shill at sgtreport.com. And take a look at this one from the name Bob Chapman is a crook at Bob Chapman is a crook at retard.com. When people leave me a comment on my website, they also leave their IP address. So let's take a closer look at the IP addresses of these comments. The purple one, 17116116010, is from Concord, USA, near Oakland. The green one traces back to Weehawken, USA, near New York. The blue one traces back to near New York as well. And the red one is from near Oakland, California. And here's the rub. Every single one of these links has one critical thing in common. These IP addresses are on opposite sides of the country, but they have almost all originated from network space fully owned by none other than Bank of America. Look it up for yourself at the American Registry for Internet Numbers. Below this video is a link to the sgtreport.com story on this very issue and you can see these IP addresses and who they belong to for yourself. These IP addresses and many others owned by Bank of America have been using dozens of different names and email addresses and they've been at this for days and days now posting comments like these and comments that are also much more offensive than these. They post these comments on literally everything we publish. Let that sink in. Multiple fake names, multiple fake email addresses, purporting to be multiple real people, all linking back to Bank of America. So there you have it. 
I invite each of you to send Bank of America an email asking them why they hate truth tellers so much and more specifically why when they recently required a five billion dollar cash infusion from Warren Buffett just to keep from collapsing why at least two or more people from within the walls of their own corporation are sending an American citizen nasty hate-filled threatening messages when they should be focused on saving their corrupt company from bankruptcy you can read more about this development and see the IP addresses and the links to who owns them for yourself at SGT report Com. I'll provide a direct link below and I'll leave you with this for the many thousands of you out there with discernment and who actually care about this republic and care about truth remember you can always judge a tree by its fruits the motto of SGT report is the corporate propaganda antidote for a reason I make the videos and cover the topics I do for a reason when the people are afraid of their fascist government and fascist corporations like Bank of America the result is tyranny but when the government fears the people, the result is liberty. Thanks for watching, and thanks for sharing the truth, and for standing shoulder to shoulder with me for liberty. Good night. Hey guys, SGT here with breaking news. Did ABC TV in Chicago post the Illinois GOP results from the primary 24 hours early? It's now 1.24 a.m. Central Standard Time, and I posted this at 11.30 Central Standard Time at SGT Report, so go there to see the, uh, the full screen shots yourself in person. Um, so here goes. On the eve before the GOP Illinois primary, one must ask, how the heck does SGT report have election results for a Republican primary in Illinois which is yet to even take place? Now we've long argued that the Ron Paul fix is in, but this, it leaves me speechless. Posted tonight, Monday, March 19th, on the website of the Chicago ABC News affiliate WLS-TV are the following election results, clearly labeled Illinois races, federal offices. Now, if we have this wrong, please do let us know why this information would exist in any form 24 hours before the primary. Or if we are indeed living in a banana republic, copy that. You now have our blessing to move out of this stinking country. Now, the time-stamped screenshot from my computer on Monday, March 19th, 2012 is from 11.29 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay? And here is what was on WLS TV's website, the local Chicago ABC News affiliate website. And as you can see, apparently, 24 hours before the primary even occurs, Rick Santorum won with 987,453 votes, 32% of the overall vote. Romney placed second with, 1900, with 919,993 votes. Gingrich, a close third. And there's Ron Paul. Poor, abused Ron Paul, no wonder he never wins, with only 95,106 votes, 3% of the total vote given to Ron Paul before the vote has even occurred, before the primary has even occurred. This is such an outrage that obviously uh, what's going to happen is WLS-TV, which has since taken this information down, you can see here, it's now gone. Uh, they took it down um, somewhere uh, approximately about an hour after I took these screenshots. Here's the original screenshot. They also have uh, election results for these other races. But there is the, um, there is the federal offices races that, uh, that they posted. Now, they're going to come out and they're probably going to claim that this was all just a test. But I'm here to tell you something far more sinister is going on here, as we've seen in all of the caucuses and primaries across this country. Ron Paul uh, has standing room only crowds and then somehow loses in these landslides to these other characters that can't drum up 100 or 200 people uh, at, at their um, rallies. So we're living in a banana republic. I wish I had better news for you. I wish this thing was going to end better, but at this point, it seems like the fix is most certainly in. Uh, please spread this far and wide, and thanks for watching. You can see these original uh, screen grabs at sgtreport.com. Thanks, guys.
History is full of interesting lessons for those of us that are paying attention. They say that ignorance is bliss and hindsight is 2020. Hindsight bias, also known as knew it all along effect or creeping determinism, is a documented psychological phenomenon in which people exaggerate the predictability of an event after it has already occurred. Monday morning quarterbacks always seem to know better. They always know what they should have done after history has been written and the page has already been turned. On a long enough timeline, we are all bound to find certain cycles and repetitions in life that are almost entirely predictable. Anyone looking back on their lives can most definitely find moments where they wish they would have acted differently in a given situation. If you only knew then what you know now, you most certainly would have acted differently than you did then, wouldn't you? And if you only knew then what you know now, you might have changed the future to better suit your needs and desires, protect your interests, and mitigate risk, wouldn't you? Our ancestors did not have the collective knowledge that we have now. There were no smartphones with wireless hotspot internet. There were no gigantic knowledge databases compiled for their benefit. Things that were learned in the past were learned the hard way. Ideas, skills, tricks, lessons, tips, and technology didn't necessarily spread to more people than your immediate community. It could take years or decades or centuries for the necessary skills like farming techniques or forging steel, curing diseases, or anything worthwhile to spread to the rest of humanity. Our knowledge database was collectively small and short-lived. This is the Chao Tzu, the world's first paper currency. Around the 10th century AD in China, during the Song Dynasty, the first paper currency experiment ended with inflation and failure. Even though the Chao Tzu was technically backed by gold, silver, and silk, conversion was actually never allowed. Yuan Dynasty banknotes were also one of the earliest fiat currencies to exist and meet the same fate. Here is one of the printing plates used to make these notes. Other fiat paper currencies were tried in China and ultimately failed as well, following massive printing and hyperinflation. It was not until the Ming Dynasty that paper fiat currency was finally outlawed to prevent these situations from happening again. Today, all national currencies of the world use fiat. Fiat is a Latin word that means let it be done. In essence, it's just some man saying it so. It requires nothing but faith for fiat currency to exist. The moment people no longer believe in its worth, it fails to function any longer. It has no intrinsic value. Fugazi is a word that reminds me of fiat. It means fake, something that has no substance. Synonyms to counterfeit, bogus, fake, false, forged, inauthentic, phony. I fail to see the difference in meaning between fiat, fugazi, or counterfeit in these contexts. The only thing separating them is that people actually value fiat currency in mass until they do not. So historically, what gave the pieces of paper our ancestors carried any actual value? Why would anybody want them? What gave them the value that separates them from today's fiat? Our money generally used to be backed by actual silver and gold. The paper was merely a receipt for that silver and gold. Instead of carrying heavy coins of gold and silver with you, these receipts were often exchanged in their place. This bill might look more familiar to you than some of the others. But there are some major differences. These are silver certificates. At any point, you can go to the bank and exchange this note for the actual metal that backed the note. It gave people confidence in the paper that in turn gave these notes actual value. As crazy as some of these bills might look to us now, they were fully convertible back to gold or silver up until 1971. For the generations that were born after Nixon closed the gold window, they will only remember money as the bills we are used to seeing in circulation. They don't teach you about sound money in school. They don't teach you where it comes from, what makes it valuable, or that America had two failed fiat currencies in the past. They don't teach about fractional reserve lending and how banks create fiat currency out of thin air. By keeping people ill-informed and ignorant about how our money used to work, it keeps us from finding out that the paper we work so hard for 
is merely an official counterfeit of real money. Can you imagine carrying around $100 worth of silver 100 years ago? If this doesn't wake you up, then nothing will. The central banks of the world have been perpetrating a massive fraud on all of us worldwide. Since 1913 in America, international bankers have been operating under the name Federal Reserve, which is not a federal institution and has no reserves. They are only middlemen who force us to essentially rent our fiat currency from them. They produce nothing of value and have commandeered the political process. Our money has been virtually destroyed, having lost over 95% of its original purchasing power in the last 100 years, as I have clearly demonstrated. Booms and bust cycles are not accidents. They are manufactured deliberately by design. Bubbles and depressions are not mysterious anomalies. Our founding fathers warned us. Thomas Jefferson told us this could happen, but we did not listen. And after Andrew Jackson had famously killed the central bank of his day, the bank tried to kill him back. He miraculously survived an attempt on his life only to have his face adorn the fiat $20 bill of today. So these bankers have been fattening us up with debt and then shearing us of profit for a goddamn century. And when they are unable to squeeze another dollar, siphon another drop of blood, or extract one more day of slavery out of us, it all implodes. These are the facts. This system will be 100 years old in 2013. We will celebrate 100 years of deceit, fraud, and manipulation. 100 fucking years. Fortunately, there is a flaw in this design. All fiat currencies end with the destruction of the note, at which point we might free ourselves from debt slavery. Are you going to be ready for this mathematical certainty? It is coming to all corners of the world, because when the petrodollar, the reserve currency of the world goes, it's going to take down all other fiat currencies with it. So if all of your wealth is measured in paper dollars and is sitting in the bank collecting 0.01% bullshit interest, or in stocks, or bonds, or securities, you might want to think twice. Because when this system goes down, it's going down for good. It cannot and will not survive forever.